Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam rasulullah, wa alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everybody's well, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to be starting a reading in uh, our book, uh, Lataif al Ma'arif by Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, which is a book on the virtues of the Islamic months and guidances for a believer in them. Uh, and inshallah, we're going to start from the beginning of the book. We read the end of the book, uh, the month of Dhul Hijjah, the importance of the 10 best days of the year. Uh, the impact of the end of the year and what a believer should think about towards the end of the year And now we're going to start from the very beginning of the book uh, Which is a book uh, again by Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala We spoke about uh, greatly at lengths uh, regarding his uh, biography uh, in the very first session, session one So uh, I know we're kind of like almost, it's, it's a form of disjointed of starting the book But once you actually read the book you'll understand uh, why it actually makes sense to read it the way we did which is to read Dhul Hijjah first and then go into the beginning of the book and the month of the Muharram uh, Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala his book's name is Lataif al-Ma'arif Fi ma al-mawasim al-am min al-wadaif so uh, from duties of a believer what they should do in each uh, Islamic month and uh, what, is, uh, what are some guidances in Islam for them and the virtues in, uh, of these months if they have any uh, and general discussion with regards to the Islamic calendar and why it's important for a Muslim to centralize their life on it. For uh, those who are interested about how the Islamic calendar started, uh, what was the uh, you know formalization of that? It was by prophetic injunction, prophetic implication. Uh, you guys can listen to a lecture I did uh, with a Productive Muslim. Uh, it's on my social media pages and it's called um, The Story of the Islamic Calendar, How It All Started, The Practical and Spiritual Benefits for a Believer. Uh, and inshallah, that's with Productive Muslim in collaboration with the Legacy Institute. Inshallah, today we're going to, like I said, start with uh, the beginning of the book by Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, which is uh, his book, um, The Taif al-Ma'arif. Uh, and we're going to just start reading it uh, through the first um, 10 days of Muharram. And hopefully, inshallah, we finish uh, the section on Muharram uh, with regards to it. So for a quick, again, uh, biography of Ibn Rajab, we're going to go ahead and read um, what's here so that we can benefit from it, inshallah, zujal. Uh, just quickly, otherwise, I've already gone into great detail about his life and who he was in the very first session. So for those of you who missed it, you can listen to it then, inshallah. His name is uh, Al-Hafiz Abdurrahman ibn Ahmed ibn Rajab. So his name is Abdurrahman. And he's named after his grandfather uh, ibn Rajab, the son of Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, his grandfather's name is Abdurrahman and he was uh, named Rajab because he was born in the month of Rajab. So it's kind of interesting that his grandfather was named after an Islamic month uh, because he was born in it. And therefore, uh, Ibn Rajab, uh, whose name is Abdurrahman, he wrote about Islamic months. How interesting, right? Uh, he was born in the... Uh, uh, he, he adopted Damascus. Uh, he was born in the month of Rajab, and he, was, uh, he adopted Damascus as his place of re residence. He belonged to the Hanbali school of fiqh, which is our school, rahimahullah ta'ala, the school that uh, associates with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And in fact, he rarely is known by any other name. When this name is taken, it most certainly refers to none other than him. Uh, most scholars of the, uh, are of the opinion that his uh, title or his uh, nickname is Zayn ad-Din. Zayn ad-Din. So that was his title. There was titles given to, to, to people. Um, and he, that, that was his title. Uh, he was also given other titles like Al-Hafidh, Al-Umda, Muhaddith, uh, Al-Qudwa, the person who's worthy of being imitated because of how um, such a great personality he had and how he was a role model to others. Uh, his birth, uh, many people say, was in 706 uh, Hijra, 706 Hijra. So we're 1,442 Hijra. He was almost uh, over 100, uh, over, excuse me, 100, over 700 years plus. And he passed away in seven, um, actually, uh, the preferred opinion is not 706, 736. And he passed away in 795. So a little over... Uh, 59 years old Rahimullah so That's a young age He passed away in, in the month of Ramadan as well um, Rahimahullah ta'ala And he was, uh, he was known for his, for his uh, scholarship For his fiqh For his views in hadith And also his spirituality All of his books are recommended books In fact one of the most recommended books In the English language uh, for, for everyone Is this book right here Let me just grab it It is called The Compendium uh, of Islamic, uh, sorry, the Compendium of Knowledge and Wisdom. It is an explanation of the 40 hadith of Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, this book is was probably one of the best books translated in the English language by uh, Abdul Samad Clark, The Compendium of Knowledge and Wisdom. Uh, and it is, um, 
uh, translated uh, by Torah publications. Uh, in any case, um, so we already went through his biography. Let's just start with the book. Introduction. We seek the assistance of Allah. First of all, I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the giver of mercy. We seek the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, send salutations and peace to our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions. My inspiration to do good is solely from Allah. I place my trust in him and I turn to him alone. All praise is due to Allah, the sovereign, the one who has control over all things, the mighty, the overpowering, the turner of hearts and eyes, the one who establishes matters as he wills and likes, and the one who imposes the day over the night and the night over the day. He cast a veil over the night so it became dark in order to provide rest and concealment. And he provided light to the lamp, meaning the sun of, of the day, so it illuminated it for movement and spreading out in the land. He appointed days and nights in order to give times for work and calculate different uh, periods. He set pattern and course. He subjugated the sun and moon which move according to a pattern and course. They follow each other in the Milky Way according to a set pattern. He made them signs through which the times of the days, nights, months and years of the world are calculated. It is through them that the times for prayer, zakah, hajj, fasting and opening of the fast are established. This is a proof which leaves no room for excuses and demonstrates the absolute wisdom for the all-wise, all-knowing and all-powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I praise Him and the sweetness of praising Him increases with repetition. What a beautiful way to say things. I express gratitude to Him and His bounties on the one who is grateful to Him as sent down in large numbers. I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah who is one and has no partner. This testimony absolves the heart from any kind of disbelief and attributing partner to Him, provided it is attested correctly. And it enables the person who utters it to return to the abode of peace, paradise. I testify that Muhammad Sallallahu is a servant and messenger. His forehead is like the full moon. It glitters brightly when, it is happy, when he was happy. The ocean in his, uh, is his right hand from which he gives whenever he is asked. And he never fears poverty. Absolute monotheism, al hanifiyah is his faith, the upright and preferred religion. It was by commissioning him as his prophet that Allah removed all burden from his followers. It was through his propagation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the harms of eyesight and the filth of the eyes. It was through his sharia that he distinguished between righteous and the sinners to the extent that the right was separated from wrong. The locks of the hearts were open and so knowledge and dignity spread and the burden of uh, folly and, and, and uh, ma'azif disappeared. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send salutations to him and his family members who were at the forefront and greatly valued. Salutations to his companions who were guides in different parts of the world. Salutations which convey to them the highest objectives in the land. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow all of them with peace. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have made the night and the day as two symbols. We then obliterated the symbol of the night and we established the symbol of the day. Luminous so that you may come to know of the number of years and of taking yourself to account. In Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 12. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is He who made the sun a radiance and the moon a light and determined for it phases so that you may know the number of years and hisab, time. In Surah Yunus, number, uh, ayah 5. And Allah, He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that He attached the calculation of years and reckoning of, uh, of time and reckoning of time to determine phases of the moon. In fact, He attached this to make the sun, a radiance, and the moon, a light. This is because the year and month are calculated by the moon, while the day and week are calculated by the sun. It is therefore these two bodies that a account of time is carried out. As for the words, and that you may know the number of years and to account for time, since the lunar month does not need to be counted because it is established between two crescents, Allah did not say that you may come to know the number of months. A month does not need a number unless the last day of the month is cloudy. In such a case, the number will be unanimously completed to 30 days. Specifically in relation to Ramadan, because there are many differences in this regard, whether Ramadan is 30 days or 29 days. As for the year, it has to be counted because there's no obvious limit for it through observation. This is especially so bearing in mind that years continue for lengthy periods of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a year into 12 months. He says the number of months in the shuhuri in Allah ashara shahra that the number of months in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 12 in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is equal to the number of the signs of the zodiac, which by the movement of the sun, the solar year is complete. By the movement of the sun, and the, uh, the moon revolves around it, the, this completes an annual circuit. Allah made the moon the basis of calculation because it, its appearance on the horizon is not dependent on any calculations. Rather, it is something manifest and seen by the naked eye. On the other hand, understanding the movement of the sun is dependent on calculations and records. Allah therefore did not impose this on us. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, We are an unlettered nation. We neither write nor calculate. The month is like this, and he went, he, he put his hand out uh, 29, right? Or he said like this, meaning 29 or 30, so he showed it with his own hands. He indicated with both his hands two times and then folded his one thumb the third time. He said, commencing fasting in Ramadan on seeing the crescent and end fasting on seeing the crescent. If the crescent or the, 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 the moon is hidden from you, complete the full number of 30 days. Allah attached the commandments of the day, salah and fasting to the movement of the sun because this too is seen with the naked eye and does not need any calculation or records. But we calculate now because we have the ability to understand the exact movement of the sun in a relationship to uh, the, the visible uh, uh, approach of understanding when the sun is visible in, t- in, in, in the sky, in every uh, location and every horizon. And that's also based on, obviously, degrees. Just like the moon's visibility is, is different from the birth. So the birth of the moon is calculated, but the visibility of the moon is something you can't necessarily fully calculate. Uh, it's calculated by uh, approximation, because obviously there's other environmental factors. But in general, there is an approximation given to the, to the moon birth, and, and an approximation given to its visibility. Whereas the sun, I mean in the clear sky unless it's raining or something, can be calculated uh, in general. Both of them can just can be calculated, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us responsible directly for the visibility of the moon according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, here which is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. Right? If you, if you see the, the moon, then fast, and if you see the moon, then break the fast, meaning according to Ramadan. And uh, he continues by saying, Salah is dependent on the break of dawn, the rising of the sun, the passing of the sun through midday, the setting of the sun, the shadows of objects equaling the length of the object. So when the, when the shadow of something is twice its length, that means what? That's the nearing the end of Asr. So when the shadow is equal to its length, when the shadow is equal to its length, that means it's time for the beginning of Asr. Okay? In any case, continuing. Uh, the length of the object and the disappre- disappearance of twilight. Fasting is delineated by the extent of the day from the break of dawn till sunset. Allah subhanahu wa meaning basically from dawn to, to dusk, just very simply, from, from, from dawn until sunset. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and reckoning, meaning uh, and, and, and hisab, and calcula- calculating your day. What does this refer to? Ibn Rajab says, when, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wal hisab. So what is, the, what is the exact ayah? In uh, uh, we, we spoke about um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set these exact times for what? لِتَعْلَمُ عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ So that you may know the uh, amount of years, so you can calculate your years, and uh, taking an account for yourself. So here, Ibn Rajab says, what does it mean to take, uh, take to account? Hisab. This refers to taking account of things which are related to religious and worldly benefit of people. For example, fasting, opening the fast, hajj, zakah, vows, atonements, number of, uh, of, of you know, uh, your spouse, for example, period of, of, uh, of an illa, uh, which, uh, of an idda, excuse me, which is a time that uh, when, a, when a wife uh, is divorced from her husband for any reason, then she has to observe an idda, which is a period of, of uh, separation, okay? Period of renting and hiring, end of the debt period, other matters which are dependent on months and years. So again, self-explanatory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, then furthermore says, يَسْأَنُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِ They ask you about the, the lunar months. Say they are appointed times for people and for hajj. In Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Ayah 189. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the lunar uh, cycles are for the calcul- calculation of times in general and specifically mention the hajj in order to show its importance. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed for his uh, believing servants certain duties which they have to carry out by night uh, in order to show obedience to him And some of these duties are, are obligatory Like the obligatory prayers While others are optional and voluntary Like the uh, optional prayers and the adhkar The remembrances of Allah in, the, in a like manner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed certain duties on his servants Which they have to fulfill in the lunar months For example like fasting, giving zakat or hajj Some of them are an obligation like fasting in Ramadan and obligatory hajj Others are optional like fasting in Sha'ban, Shawwal and the month we're in, like Muharram. Muharram, we'll get to that, inshallah. And uh, the sanctified months, the sacred months. So, uh, the sacred months are four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah chose 12 months as the, the year. This is what He has uh, enjoined on all of human beings. Minha arba'atun hurum. And from these 12, four of them are sacred. What are the four sacred? This month that we are in now. The month that we're in now is the beginning uh, uh, month of the year, and it starts with a sacred month, which is Muharram. The other sacred month, which is Rajab, and then the last two sacred months are the last two months of the year. So very simple. The last two months of the year, the first month of the year, and then the Rajab. Very simple. Okay? So Muharram, Rajab, Dhul Qi'da, and Dhul Hijjah are the four sacred months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, do not wrong yourself in them. Do not wrong yourself in them. Okay? And uh, this is mentioned... In the ayah in itself, okay. منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم. Do not wrong yourself in them. This is the, this is among them four are sacred. This is the straight or correct faith. Therefore, do not wrong yourself in it. Surah the Tawbah, ayah number thirty-six. Allah subhanahu wa taala says the month of Hajj are few and well known. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says it about in Surah Al-Baqarah as well. It is the month of Ramadan, Shahr Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. So he mentioned Shahr, the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Allah subhanahu wa taala made certain days and nights superior to others. He also made the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, better than one thousand months. Better than, not one thousand months, better than that. Okay. And he took an oath on the last, uh, on the ten nights. Excuse me, the ten nights, meaning they are the preferred opinion. That is the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. The first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, those are the first the, the, the ten nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, swore by in Surah Al Fajr, Wal Fajr wa by the uh, by the dawn and um, uh, by the dawn and by the ten nights. The ten nights that are referred here are not the ten nights of Ramadan, they are the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, which are the ten best days of the year. We just passed them, right? That was last month. What does it mean do not wrong yourself in them in these four sacred months? What it means is that you should not commit sins as much as you possible. Wrong yourself is, uh, is committing sins because that is the greatest form of wronging yourself, right? Wronging yourself is dhulm and dhulm is committed against yourself by committing sin and that is dhulm against yourself, not against Allah. You don't commit oppression against Allah, you commit oppression against yourself. And that's what it means do not wrong yourself in. Try not to commit sins in these months, meaning this is the month that you shouldn't be committing sins. In general, but these four months are sacred, meaning what? Sins are actually multiplied and good deeds are multiplied in these months, which we'll get, get to. He said, we will explain this at the appropriate place, and we already did. We just covered Dhul Hijjah, alhamdulillah, 13 sessions. If you want to listen to Dhul Hijjah, you can listen to it. Inshallah, we, it's all saved. There are in each of these uh, virtuous seasons, active obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through which a person gains proximity to Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses certain times and certain places. Why? So that you can take those as opportunities to number one, Forgive the things that you've done in the past, such as like Muharram, it's a sacred month. So for you to do as much as you can in this month to make up for the previous year. And that is why, interestingly enough, guess what? Uh, plot, you know, uh, what is it? Not plot twist, but um, I forgot the, the phrase where you're giving a, um, like a, you're giving up the plot or story of a thing. What is it? Ah, it's coming to my head. But anyway, um, in essence, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever fasts the day of Ashura, which is the tenth day of Muharram, right? Allah subhanahu wa taala forgives the sins of the previous year. So, subhanallah, this is an opportunity for you to make up for the previous year. Uh, spoiler alert! Thank you, Zakia. All right, spoiler spoiler alert. Spoiler alert is what uh, that if you fast the the tenth day of Ashura, which is the tenth day of this month of Muharram." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah will forgive the sins of the previous year. 
And that is uh, an opportunity again that Allah blesses certain times and places for you to take benefit from them. Spoiler alert, English, that's right. Okay, continuing, um, he says that in these, in, it is during such seasons that Allah has uh, certain fragrances. He pours onto a servant by virtue of his favor and mercy on him. Like literal fragrances? No, this is just an allegory figurative speech. Meaning fragrances of Allah, things that he loves uh, for servants to, be, uh, to do on, at those particular times. He says the for- fortunate person is the one who takes maximum benefit from the virtuous seasons of the months, days, and hours and gains proximity to his master during those times through acts of, of worship and obedience. It is likely that some of these fragrances will then envelop them and thereby, and thereby they enjoy some good and blessings from taking advantage of those days, months of the year, for example. After which they will be secured from punishment, from hellfire and its, and, and, and its punishment of, 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 of burning flames. Ibn Abi Dunya at Tabarani others narrate a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said the following. He said, Utlubu al khayra dahrakum wa ta'arradu li nafahati rahmati rabbikum. فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ نَفَحَاتٍ مِّنْ رَحْمَتِهِ يُصِيبُ بِهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَصَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ, يس- أن يَسْتُرَ عَوْرَاتِكُمْ وَيُؤَمِّنَ رَوْعَاتِكُمْ And this is a weak narration. This is a weak narration, okay? Uh, it, is, it is narrated in the Tabarani. Uh, and most of their, uh, the men are okay, but they're all, it's generally all very weak. And it's been uh, weakened by Abu Nu'aym and Baghawi and Suyuti and... and uh, and Ash-Shawkani and Munawi. Uh, and uh, Sheikh Al-Albani has said it's authentic in, in any case. He's, he authenticated it, but the rest of the scholars say it's weak. In any case, what it means is, uh, from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the meaning is correct, and that's why we, na- we narrate it, to make sure that we're saying what's authentic and what's not. And if the meaning is correct, then, alhamdulillah, we, can, uh, we take it by the meaning, and that's why Ibn Rajab, a great scholar of hadith, mentioned it anyway. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, Seek good throughout your lives and seek the fragrances of your Lord's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most certainly has these fragrances of His mercy which He pours onto whomever He wills on His servants. Ask Allah to conceal your private matters. So don't publicize your sins, don't publicize your issues. right? Unless you're seeking help, unless you're seeking advice, there's, it's, not, it's not good to be open about your sins. That's what, that's what it's referring to. If somebody needs counsel, somebody needs... Um, of course, uh, help or aid or advice, that's different. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people publicizing their sins for no reason. Like going on, for, going on social media on clout and literally just publicizing things that they do. You know, I, I drank alcohol. What, what, what benefit are you getting from this, you know, in any sense? And, uh, and he says, um, Ask Allah to conceal your private matters and give, your sec- and give you security from all that which causes you fear. Uh... And uh, Tabarani narrates from uh, Muhammad uh, ibn Maslama, and this is also extremely weak. This following narration is extremely weak. Um, from Muhammad ibn Maslama, that, uh, uh, that he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down fragrances of His mercy during certain times. Seek these fragrances, because if any of you obtain such a fragrance, they will never suffer again. The idea, what is this fragrance? It's called nafahat in Arabic. Nafahat are like these, these uh, fragrances of mercy. So it's an allegory, it's a figurative speech which refers to moments of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepts, for example, repentance and forgiveness. Moments in, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises and accepts uh, dua uh, and elevates a person. They're called nafahat. So they, the way they translate it is, is fragrances. Uh, in any case, it's, it's an allegory, it's figurative, it's not literal. Uh, Uqba bin Amir narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the following. And this hadith is authentic. This hadith is authentic. So listen to this carefully. A seal is set on every deed of the day. A seal is set on every deed of the day. That means every single de- day, there should be a, you know, something that you're doing that's benefiting you, not taking you away. And if it is, then at least you take that day as a day that you seek forgiveness from. So a seal is set on every deed of the day. Ibn Abi Dunya narrates from Mujahid who said, Allah says on every single day, O man, or O woman, O O human, right? I have brought today to you and I will never bring it back to you. Consider then what you are going to do in it. So subhanAllah, one of the the greatest blessings of the Islamic calendar and the importance of organizing time and how our faith, I just want you to reflect on this, how much our faith encourages us 
to have time management and to organize our life and to not just live heedlessly. You know, like people, what are, what are you doing today? I'm scrolling through Netflix. How is that an activity, right? And I know people, they fall asleep scrolling through Netflix. That's like, what are you doing? Uh, either watch something or get over it, right? Have a plan. Do something with your life, right? So imagine the kind of time management and efficiency mechanism, personal development that is ingrained into our timetables that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for us. Because a believer doesn't sit just without any kind of activity, all right? It's an amazing thing that you think about our faith has that ingrained, where you have, you have like this billions of dollars personal development and uh, industry, which tries to uh, fix a human being's what? Sense of uh, inefficiency and trying to take advantage of their day-to-day life and so on and so forth. And that's ingrained and built into our faith. How? At the very least, prayer five times a day. At the very least. That means you're organizing your time based on when you're praying, what you're doing before and what you're doing after it. At the very least. And that's a minimum. Imagine other people don't have that. You should be thankful. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. Allah gave us five daily prayers for us to be organized. And that is a uh, you know, further sign for us to organize the rest of our lives. Not just say, okay, you know what, whatever. right? So... Um, Ibn Rajab rahimullah continues, he says, When the day expires, Allah folds it up and sets a seal on it. The seal does not break until Allah Himself breaks it on the day of resurrection. At that time when the, when the day expires, it says, All praise is due to Allah who gave me peace from the world and its, and its inhabitants. Even the day is sick and tired of the world. So, on the day of judgment, it's like, thank, thank God, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He gave me peace from the world and its inhabitants. Teaches you that this world is so temporal, even the day itself doesn't want to be here, wants to be in the next life. Ajib. The night also says the same thing, and this is narrated in um, Al Hilya, Hilya al Awliya, Hilya al Awliya. Okay. Malik ibn Dinar narrates that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, that's not his name, neither was it close to it. There's an entire lecture I gave called uh, Jesus in the Quran or Jesus in the Islamic uh, um, tradition. You can listen to it inshallah ta'ala online. Uh, Malik ibn Dinar, he says, narrates Isa alayhi salam, used to say, this day and night are two treasures. You should therefore be watchful of, of where you place them and what you place in them. You should be therefore watchful of what you place. They're two treasures. So be careful what you place in them, the day and the night. He also used to say, do in the night whatever was created to be done in it. And do during the day whatever was created to be done in it. Don't do things that in the day which you're not supposed which you're supposed to do in the night. And do, uh, don't do things in the night which you're supposed to do during the day, in general. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, the one that we're talking about every, every what, Monday and Wednesday, we have a class on reading his wisdoms. He said, with the arrival of every single day, the day says... O oh people, I am a new day and I am a witness to whatever is done in me. Once the sun sets, I will never return to you until the day of resurrection. Al-Hasan al-Basri also used to say, O oh man, or O oh, oh human being, the day is your guest and a guest is bound to depart. A guest either praises you or criticizes you. Similar is the case with the night. SubhanAllah, it's very beautiful. This is narrated also in Hilyat al-Awliya. Narrated in Hilyat al-Awliya. Bakr al-Muzani said, each time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces a day for the inhabitants of the world, the day announces, O human, make the most of me because there could well be no day for you after me. The night announces, O human, make the most of me because there would, could be very well no night for you after me. This is also narrated in uh, Sifat al-Safwa. Umar uh, ibn Dhar used to say, do good deeds for yourselves. May Allah shower His mercy on you in this night and its darkness. A cheated person is the one who is cheated of the good of the day and night. They deprive, the deprived person is the one who is deprived of the good of the day and night. The night and day have been made means for the believers to the obedience of their Lord for worship, right? They have also been made means for, the, for misery for others, like those who don't believe, because they are heedless of their own selves. Revive yourselves for the sake of Allah through His remembrance because the hearts are revived through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this particular uh, hadith which is narrated in, in, uh, in Bukhari, which means it's an authentic hadith. 
the hadith is okay the similitude of the person who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord is like that of the living and the dead. So the, the likeness or the example of those who remember Allah and those who don't are like those who are living and those who are dead. And uh, he said, a person who stands up at night for the sake of Allah rejoices by the standing in the darkness of his grave. Meaning what? The standing that you do in the night will actually help illuminate the darkness of the grave. Why? Because you're standing in a time where it's complete darkness so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will illuminate a time when you're in physical darkness with the spiritual darkness of standing in the night. May Allah make us of that so we can reach that level to stand at night. It's a very beautiful and powerful allegory. Okay? How many of people who remain sleeping at night shall regret their lengthy period of sleeping when, the, when they see the honor which Allah gave those who were His worshippers tomorrow? So those who are sleeping at night, they will see the level of those who were standing during the night while they were standing during the day. May Allah make us of them. You should therefore make the best of the passing hours, days, and nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on you. What a beautiful message from Ibn Rajab rahimullah. Dawood al Ta'i said, The night and day are stations at which people get down at one after the other until this conveys them to their final journey. You should therefore try to present some good at every station for the next journey. The journey is going to end very soon and it will end sooner than you expect. Take provisions for your journey and fulfill whatever responsibilities you have because it will descend on you uh, suddenly without any kind of warning. Ibn Abi Dunya said, Mahmud ibn Hassan uh, recited some poetry. He said, Mada amsuka al maldi shahidan muaddala wa'aqabhu yawmun alayka jadidu fa in kunta bil amsif tarafta isa'atan fa thanni bi ihsanin wa anta hamidu. فَيَوْمُكَ إِنْ اِعْتَبْتَهُ عَادَ نَفْعُهُ عَلَيْكَ وَمَاضِي الْأَمْسِ لَيْسَ يَعُودُ فَلَا تُرْجِي فِعْلَ الْخَيْرِ يَوْمًا إِلَى غَدٍ لَعَلَّ غَدًا يَأْتِي وَأَنْتَ فَقِيدُ Wow, subhanAllah, what powerful lines. Listen to this. He said in these lines of poetry, uh, Mahmoud ibn al-Hasan, he said, Your yesterday passed by as a witness, and it has been followed by a new day. If you make the best of your day, its benefit will actually come to you. As for yesterday, it is not going to return. If you committed any wrong yesterday, follow it by a good day today, and you will be eligible for praise. Do not ever hope to do good tomorrow, because it may well be that tomorrow will come, but you will not. But tomorrow will come, but you will be the one that's missing. The commentary of Abd ibn Humayd and other reliable commentaries quote the following statement of Al Hasan with regards to this verse, uh, Al Hasan al Basri. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا In Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 62, Al-Hasan said, مَنْ عَجَزَ بِاللَّيْلِ كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ أَوَّلِ النَّهَارِ مُسْتَعْتَبٌ وَمَنْ عَجَزَ بِالنَّهَارِ كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مُسْتَعْتَبٌ He said, if a person does not do any good at night, the first part of the day is there to reprimand them. And if they do not do, good, do any good during the day, the night is there to reprimand them. Meaning what? Saying, listen, you, uh, the, the verse of the Qur'an was, it is he who created the night and the day to follow each other for the one who wants to reflect or wants to be grateful. So he said that if the night and the day are following each other, when the night passes, the day is reminding you, hey, make up for what you did. And then when the day passes, the night reminds you, hey, liman arada arada shukura. whoever is going to be a reminder that, hey, make up for what you did during the day. And be thankful and grateful. So subhanAllah, every single day is a reminder for you. The day is a reminder of the previous night, and the night is a reminder of the, of the day. For you to remember and reflect, and to seek to make amends, and for you to be grateful for what Allah gave you. What a beautiful, powerful Al-Hasan al-Basri. My man. That is why we're doing a uh, commentary on his wisdoms by Imam Ibn al-Jawzi on Mondays and Wednesdays. MashaAllah, Allahumma barak. Bakr al muzani said, each time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces a day for the inhabitants of the world, it announces, O oh human, make the most of me. Oh, we already, we already recited this. Qatada said, a believer may forget at night, but remembers with the approach of the day. But may forget to do good during the day, 
but remembers at the approach of the night. So subhanAllah, look at this. This khatab, this is a great scholar of the second generation, meaning a student of Ibn Abbas, a student of a companion. What he tells us is, listen, you're going to be forgetful. You might commit sin. But remember, a believer remembers and takes advantage of the night to, to ask forgiveness for the day. And if they committed sins during the night, they will, uh, if they committed sins during the day, they will remember to ask forgiveness in the night. So it's beautiful. What a practical approach in understanding faith. And then he said, uh, Qatada says, a person came to Salman al-Farisi and said, I'm unable to engage in worship at night. SubhanAllah. What? Look at, people are so practical. Look, I can't stand at night. What should I do? So this is what Salman al-Farisi, the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, told him. He said, if that is the case, do not display weakness during the day. SubhanAllah. If you can't stand at night, at least take advantage of the day. You have so much to do during the day. You have dhikr, you have Quran, you have charity, you have helping others, you have paying off debts, you have being in the aid of someone that needs it. There's so much to do during the day. So he said, if you can't stand at night, then at least don't show weakness during the day. Salman al-Farisi, my man. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. This deen, this faith is so practical for every person. It's, it's the most practical thing you can imagine out there. So it's so beautiful to be part of it. Say, Alhamdulillah, you're Muslim. Qatada said, do good deeds for the sake of Allah during these days and nights because they are conveyances which convey people to their final abode. They're, they are means for you to end up to your final destination. They are the means. The, the actions that you do carry you in the hereafter. There is no physical uh, elements other than the deeds take physical shape. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah that you recited or the Quran that you, that you recited and implemented, right? You will be under the shade of your charity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the charity given in secret extinguishes the anger of, of the Lord. So all of these manifestations we think to be metaphysical will have physical form and shape. Your good deeds will come to you in your grave in the shape of a person. So if they were good, they will look beautiful and handsome. And if they were bad, and if you didn't have good deeds and you had sins, it will come as an ugly person. And you literally will be accompanied by your deeds. May Allah protect us and grant us good companionship. And he says, they bring, Al Qatada says, Ibn Rajab says, Qatada continues by saying, do good deeds for the sake of Allah during these days and nights because they are means of delivering you and people to their final abodes. They bring close all that is far, make old that is new, and bring promises until the day of arrival of the day of resurrection. And then Ibn Rajab says, I sought the guidance of Allah in compiling this book on duties for the different months of the year and acts of obedience which are specific to certain months and seasons. For example, prayer, fasting, dhikr, gratefulness, providing food, offering salam, and other qualities of the righteous and noble people. I compiled this book so that it will help me and my brothers in making preparations for the hereafter and preparing for death before its arrival. I hand over my affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is most certainly fully aware of his servant, servants. I also compiled this book so that it may be a worthy source for the lecturers who want to prepare speeches, like people on Instagram and Facebook and the internet who want to deliver something that will benefit, inshallah, the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us and accept it from Ibn Rajab. Ibn Rajab, this great scholar of the Hanbali Madhab. Rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'ah. The most superior deed in the sight of Allah is for the person who seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when awakening those who are asleep and warning those who are heedless. Allahu Akbar. So listen, the first thing you should care about is your own sincerity. Stop worrying about the whole world and giving reminders and sending out these messages and forwarding all these things. The first thing you should care about is yourself and your sincerity. May Allah make us sincere, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah make us of those that only seek His, His pleasure and not care about forwarding things and messaging and, and, and about others more than we care about ourselves and our family. And then he uh, quotes the ayah in, in Surah Al-Dhariyat where Allah subhanahu wa says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ remind, uh, remind because reminders benefit the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa says, المؤمنين. المؤمنين remember is a higher level of those who are just Muslimin. And this is general, it refers to Muslimin as well. But it, there is a implication spiritually that a believer who listens to advice and heeds that advice, they're going to, what? They're going to benefit from the reminders. May Allah make us of those that benefit from reminders, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he says, Allah promised a mighty reward for the person who enjoins the giving of charity, the doing of good, or joining ties of kinship. Ties, joining ties of kinship, a lot of people don't understand because it's a complex Arabic word, uh, English phrase. And that is basically solving problems between you and your family, those who cut themselves off. Right? 
and you join between them when they have grudges against each other, they don't talk to one another. The a reward for such a person who does this is so great in Islam. Okay? And he does this all for this for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following uh, verse that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, not I'm sorry, one moment please. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The Prophet he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Not good are most of their deliberations except those who join charity or sadaqah uh, or good uh, or charity or good deeds or reconciles among people. And whoever does this for the pleasure of Allah, we will give them a great reward. We will give them a great reward. And he said that the Prophet said in the hadith that is narrated in uh, Muslim, which is an authentic hadith, Man ila hudan falahu mithlu ajri man tabi'ahu. Which is a very powerful hadith, which the Prophet said, the person who calls towards others towards guidance shall receive the reward equal to the one who follows him. So may Allah make us of those that called other people towards that which is good and follows it. And he says, وَكَفَى بِذَلِكَ فَضْلًا عَمِيمًا Ibn Rajab says, and that is enough itself for a great blessing and virtue. Enough for you to say, hey, any person that follows you either accepts Islam or becomes uh, closer to faith or because of your character or your, your message to them that they loved Islam, they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, guess what? You're going to get reward for everything that they do, inshallah ta'ala. And that in itself is a great, great uh, reason for calling other people to, to faith. And inshallah, we will end here, bi Allah Azza wa Jal, at this uh, juncture. We will have a daily reading, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, you will get an announcement probably at the same time that we started. Okay? Uh, and uh, Or maybe a little bit later. We'll see, inshallah. And um, we'll have a daily reading until we finish the section of Muharram. And then every single month we will have a reading as well, inshallah ta'ala. Again, for those of you who uh, missed the biography of Ibn Rajab, go, look for session one. Of this session Remember we read the end of the book Because it relates to the beginning of the book uh, And the fact that we were in the month of, of Dhul Hijjah And now we're starting from the beginning of the book Of, the, uh, of Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, Which is Lataif al Ma'arif Which is uh, the book about um, The uh, virtues of Islamic months And guidance for what the believers should do In each of them Inshallah ta'ala We're talking about the month of Muharram May Allah subhanahu wa bless all of you We'll see you guys tomorrow Inshallah ta'ala May Allah bless you all. Wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala sahbihi ajma'in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this new Islamic new year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us uh, turn to new beginnings, to bless us in this year, to forgive us for the past year, to make this a year of, of izzah and honor for the Muslims and believers, to remove oppression from them, to remove injustice from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, uh, give us a year where we will see, inshallah, in our lifetime a free Palestine, to free uh, our brothers and sisters in Syria from the oppressors and to free our brothers and sisters in Yemen as well as in, uh, in, uh, in Burma and uh, Somalia and all of those places where people are suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa make it easy on them and, and uh, send his, uh, his mercy on them and to grant our brothers and sisters of Afghanistan peace and, uh, and freedom from all kinds of oppression and injustice and corruption. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانًا الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in China uh, and in Kashmir as well in all of the oppression that they're going through. وصلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى صحبه الرئيس سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك وأخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.